Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Good night. Uh, tonight we are here for 420 Spiritual Living. And I'm just your host, Joan of Angels, and so happy to see all of you. And welcome to all of you for being here with us tonight. And uh, it is 420, 720, 1020, wherever you may be. So come on in. This show is all about today self-care, how to take care of yourself, how to incorporate cannabis into your daily lifestyle. And in a few minutes, I'm going to bring on my very special friend. But first, I want to tell you and take us a little bit into feeling why we're here and the energy of that. So as I'm welcoming all of you to drop in with us, to take a deep breath in, to center, because in essence, that is what 420 is all about. 420 is that moment of taking that deep breath, of breathing, of whether you're with friends, you could chill. If you're by yourself, you can meditate and just have a moment of peace. So we'll start right now and go from there. So taking a deep breath in, everyone, and letting it all out. Good. And again, taking a deep breath in. And letting it all out, Mother, Father, God. We are so grateful to be here with our friends, with our tribe, with those who are asking to step into the consciousness of cannabis, the consciousness of the spirit guides, the consciousness of awareness, of growth of unlimited possibilities. We ask that our guides and our angels, our departed loved ones be with us, the spirit of the cannabis plants be with us and our spiritual team as we really just step into letting go of anything that doesn't serve us, anything this life, past life, future lives. And we just really get to be here in the here and now. And with that in mind, I want to introduce you myself. If you are new to the show, I'm Joan of Angels, also Dr. Joan Hangarter, chiropractor. And you can find me at Joan of Angels. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please like, subscribe, and share with your people so we can kind of spread these messages around the world, messages of consciousness and of growth. So there you have it. And so we're going to be talking today about self-care. And that is so in alignment with my work as a chiropractor, because as a chiropractor, my job was to have people teach people and to treat them in a way that got their body, their immune system, all those systems in your body to work well together. And that was the whole point of wellness care is how do you turn on your body's own natural healing? And that is why I'm always constantly talking about the miracles of cannabis, because cannabis turns on your own body's natural healing. And with that in mind, I asked my dear friend, Michelle Rizzio, I'm so excited she's here. Okay, she is an established cannabis professional in the world's cannabis industry, the largest cannabis industry in the world, which is right here in California. She dived into the medicinal value of cannabis well over a decade ago. And with training in Northern California, Michelle learned about the relationship between plants and the human body for healing, for sustenance, and for life, okay? And this led her to the real life practice of applying cannabis to replace the opiate prescriptions her wheelchair bound father had been taking for nearly two decades. After assisting her dad to overcome his healthcare challenges, he was actually able to retire the wheelchair, which I think is in his front yard as a crutch, but I had thought maybe they'd gotten rid of it. But you, to retire your wheelchair, by the way, and to stand on your own two feet is not any small accomplishment. Together, after that, they owned and operated Cultivation Hydroponic Shop for three years in her hometown, which is my hometown. And in 2018, she entered California's new Prop 64 recreational market and built the footprint of Henry's original in the Coachella Valley and in Inland Empire. Literally, she became a star in the field. She is now an account manager for Herbal Solutions, which is the largest cannabis distribution company worldwide, worldwide. 
So her portfolio includes more than 25 top brands across the cannabis category. So I am so happy to introduce you all to my dear friend, and she is one of my besties. <laughs> all right, guys, this is Michelle Hi. Rizzio, <laughs> goddess and, and cannabis expert. And uh, I'm just so happy you're here. <laughs> what a wonderful introduction. Thank you so much. I brought some cans. Um, these are one of my favorite ways to actually consume cannabis because these days I don't quite smoke as much as I used to because I'm always behind the wheel. But these are cans. They're infused with cannabis and it's my favorite flavor, the blood orange cardamom. And it has four milligrams of CBD and two milligrams of THC. So shall we? Shall we? Okay. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> this is great. And I just want everyone to understand cardamom is an herb that's for healing, right? Yes. So you pop this part first. Oh God. All these child, <laughs> my biggest nightmare is having to do this. Oh look, she says, hi, Michelle. Take a, take a peek at the screen. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. A little tricky, but I managed to do it with my claws on. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. This is not for the fearless guys. And, um, and I do understand that cannabis oh, is now one. created. Oh, okay. So just so you know, she's <laughs> saving me from embarrassing myself. <laughs> Cheers. Right, host Michelle, thank you so much for being here. And, um, of course, isn't that good? Oh God. <laughs> and being a part of our cannabis 420 spiritual living, incorporating cannabis lifestyle. <laughs> so tell us, you know, your introduction actually said a lot about you. Yeah, sure did. But how did your relationship with cannabis actually first start? That so I guess my very first time smoking cannabis was uh, when I was 16 years old. I was invited to one of my dear friend's birthday parties, and there was what they call like Reggie weed being rolled up. With what is Reggie? And, and um, Reggie is like regular weed. You know, it's nothing special. It's got stems. It's brown. It has uh, seeds in it. And um, we smoked it really awfully rolled joint and I immediately had a head change and unfortunately had a horrible panic attack and <laughs> when my mom picked me and my friends up I was immediately caught and then grounded for two and a half <laughs> weeks and I missed Halloween because of it which was completely horrible um, but then I I ended up meeting a, a guy I was going to do his dreads and he had the most beautiful purple nugs. I was going to maintain his dreads for him and uh -huh. he smoked me out that stuff. And suddenly my back didn't hurt. And so I was recently diagnosed in, when I was like 16 years old with degenerative disc disease. And they had me on somas and they had me on like, I don't know, whatever they give you, like for muscle relaxing, mm -hmm. very difficult to stay awake in high school. And so when I smoked that beautiful purple nug, I suddenly felt nothing for like a month. And I was like, wait, why am I not in pain for a month? <laughs> so from there, um, every month I ended up smoking a little bit of cannabis and it would maintain my pain tolerance. And then um, I moved to San Francisco and up there at the time, it was the 215 market, um, the traditional market as they call it. And okay. Can you stop 215 market? The is that the medical marijuana yep, that was market the medical for our marijuana audience? Market. Okay. <laughs> yep, that was uh, when it came in in 1996 to 2018 was when that was uh, established in California. And so, um, yeah, I ended up being able to have the opportunity to sit in on a lot of really great lectures, a lot of really great symposiums, um, both hosted by my school as well as hosted by the various different cannabis spaces in uh, San Francisco. And uh, then I met a really awesome deadhead woman and she just kind of taught me the way. And so then I became a daily <laughs> cannabis smoker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got it. So, so you started off recreation. Let me see if I get this. You really started it was definitely out medical. Oh, so yeah, you would say, oh, pain. so you would actually not go out to smoke weed except no. that like really using it for your back until I was like okay. in my early twenties. Then mm -hmm. it started becoming like, oh, I can actually use this to like, you know, stimulate creativity and like help me like get my homework done and, you know, help me enjoy my nature walks a little better depending on what strain I'm smoking. So then I was like, wow, it's not just like you smoke 
one joint and all of them take care of everything. There's differences to this plant. Okay, so this is good. So this is kind of what led you into. And guys, can you share this out with your friends? Like, <laughs> like, subscribe, and share. Michelle is a treasure. And so send it out to all your wannabe smokers, um, your parents even, right? Because she saved her dad's life. And we're going to talk about that literally too. So please share us out with everyone. <laughs> All right. So you started, it's so rare you find a, a young person at 16. Well, that's not true. I was going to say it's so rare that you find a young person starting it on the medical aspect of yeah. it. A lot of people were smoking for fun, for sure. Yeah. But right now, since it's become legalized, actually, more and more young people are, are using cannabis for seizures and pain and other serious conditions. Yeah, actually. the microdose is very popular right now. Well, tell us about microdosing then with cannabis. So microdosing is something that I was introduced to probably right before I became pregnant with my son in 2013. Um, and prior to that, I was like a huge macro doser. Like me and my homegirl would smoke every day, multiple joints a day, like just the most ridiculous size joints you could get from the dispensary. Like I was eating like the thousand milligram edibles. It was stupid, but <laughs> okay, it was um, stupid. You it was a macro dose. It was a that. macro dose that I was taking, uh -huh. and I was very, very, very high when I lived in San Francisco constantly, which was great. It was exciting and fun. But then, um, you know, obviously, like things started changing in my life. I was entering my junior year of college. Um, I was going to the University of San Francisco at the time. Um, the coursework started getting more rigorous. You know, I was getting into those 400 level classes, like getting closer to getting my degree. And um, I had to start understanding microdosing and uh, not smoking a whole ounce in three days, but actually like making, um, you know, a, an eighth like last a day and then working even lower to getting myself to just smoking like at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. And then um, after having my son, I really understood the power of the micro dose and, and taking tolerance breaks and being able to really um, incorporate cannabis in smaller portions and still being able to get the same results that I, I needed initially for my body and for my, um, my mindset. This is really actually important. Okay, so you learned how to take a large recreational dose that was kind of causing, it was interfere, I can imagine it would interfere with motherhood for sure, <laughs> and a few other things. So you managed to learn how to microdose that. Right. I did hear you say you smoked an eighth a day. I was smoking an ounce in three days. Okay. An eighth in a day. All right, so you guys yeah. know that this woman has really shifted and learned a lot about how you take it because this is so common for people to start off. Some people do with start the off doses. with the macro doses. So tell us, go, let's jump around a little bit. Sure. I want to go to your dad. So you leave San Francisco. You have your you have a little boy yet? You so I was in my junior year was when I started microdosing. And it was when I also started getting really involved in like gardening and getting really involved in herbalism and kind of just understanding that there was more than just, uh, you know, over the counter medicines and prescriptions, you know, and my dad would listen to me talk about all these new discoveries about biodynamic farming and herbs and application of different plants to the body. And he has a condition called reflex symptoms pathetic dystrophy, um, which my entire upbringing what kept him in a wheelchair with a morphine pump that had to be filled up every single month by going to LA and, and, you know, going through all of that. Lots of doctors. A morphine pump. Okay. Yeah. Morphine pump and also tons of like oral medications. And he was also on a, uh, fentanyl patch as well. Thanks so much for that, that feedback. Luke. Right. Right. We'll tell you even <laughs> I'll more. Tell you tons for sure. And so, um, you know, I really wanted to see my dad's life change, especially as he was showing me that he was open to learning. Um, and one day uh, before I had come back, he uh, went outside and smoked a joint with my sister and her and my brother-in-law, my now brother-in-law. And he slept for 10 hours after he smoked that joint. And it wasn't even the full joint. He just had like a couple drags off the joint and then called me the next day and was like, Michelle, like, I cannot believe this. Tell me everything that you know. And it went from, you shouldn't have a medical card. Like you should stick to your solo medications. Like be careful what you're getting involved in up there in San Francisco to tell me more. And I was like, oh, 
Okay, so um, I ended up telling him a lot more and he ended up getting some connects down here and started with the salves and the tinctures. And then um, in 2014, I moved back from San Francisco to Desert Hot Springs and I really started going hard with my dad. That was when I was living with them and my son had just come into our lives and my dad was really curious about it all. And um, I started educating him on how to smoke and how to use cannabis. Uh, for his symptoms and how to discern terpenes and strains and, you know, what was what. And then also we started growing flour as well. And uh, so he was able to have his own supply of flour and uh, the leaves to juice, which then created cold pressed THCA juice, uh, which was really helpful for his inflammation and for his pain. And so with him- Okay, stop. I, I want you to go slow for a second. Yeah. So you got that guys, this is juicing <laughs> with raw cannabis yeah. also for pain. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Absolutely. And so then um, he ended up getting out of the wheelchair within three years of his first experience of smoking weed in the backyard with my sister and my brother-in-law. And uh, from that point on, it just kind of kept going. You know, he every five years had to get his morphine pump replaced to the newest um, version. And this time he went and got it done in 2015. And unfortunately, it rejected and he had to make a major decision on if he was going to persist with the excruciating pain that was happening from his morphine pump rejecting and the um, solution not being sprayed onto his spine because it was puddling all the medicine was puddling at his spine and so he was he was having a lot of issues with the internal morphine pump or um or take wow. it out you know and so he was convinced he was going to die in that wow. summer he was convinced he was like he was very like writing the will, you know, making sure my sister and I were set up with what we needed, everything. Um, and then he got it removed and I started getting him on dabable concentrates, um, specifically uh, like raw garden and uh, some other really great ones that were in the market at the time. And it was clean green certified, which I really valued and I thought was super important. And um, also was able to get stuff for him from the traditional market as well, from friends who were able to blow their own wax and blow their own um, butter and stuff like that like I really know exactly what yeah. she means by blow yeah well yeah it's a whole process okay. of turning the weed into the concentrate okay and good. so then he ended up getting through the summer of that morphine pump rejecting and uh ultimately coming out of his body and I'm happy to report that here we are in 2021 and last uh spring in April 2020 he finally weaned himself off the uh fentanyl patch so it was the wheelchair the morphine pump, the over-the-counter medications, and then finally the fentanyl patch in 2020. So it was about a five, six year process to fully get to where he is now, where he's hiking and he's going out on his, in his Jeep. And my, my son has no idea what having his grandpa in a wheelchair looks like. Wow. You yeah. grew up for 20, <laughs> you said your dad was in a wheelchair for 20 years. Yeah. My whole upbringing for 18 years, just about, he was in the wheelchair. So it really transformed everything. Um, it, it definitely embraced my new path that I was on, mm -hmm. um, supported that as well as like encouraged my mother and my cousins and, you know, my sister to, to really look at it a little bit more, um, I guess without the taboo, I suppose is the best way to put it. So interesting. Okay. So, I mean, a few things come up for me. First of all, you got your parent, and I know a lot of younger people want to know how they can get their dad or mom to take <laughs> cannabis because, and to get them off, you know, for their pain. So there's that issue. And then I, I'm hearing that you're saying it took five years. Yeah, it's a so process. It's a, this is so important because I have a girlfriend whose back went out and she, you know, tried cannabis mm -hmm. and it didn't. And she's supposedly, you know, a cannabis expert and she couldn't get it to relieve. Oh, I see you know, I mean, opiates are pretty strong. So how do you actually manage to wean someone from that? Sure. Well, so that's a really great question. First is you need them to be on board, right? Like my dad tried the joint before I told him to smoke the joint. 
Ah, yeah. okay. So he, it's like he you have was to like, leave it laying around. Yeah, totally. So that was that part. And then also he was accepting that my sister and I were, you know, engaging in cannabis use. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's about really understanding the endocannabinoid system. <laughs> my favorite thing ever <laughs> about cannabis. So the endocannabinoid system is a system that lives in, I believe it is the, oh man, the adrenals. Gosh, I might be wrong, but it lives inside of your body. And what it does is it actually allows you to take in extocannabinoids, which would be cannabis or cannabinoids found in other um, plants. There are cannabinoids found in like, for instance, hibiscus and, um, and uh, d d d I can see the flower in my mind right now, but I can't <laughs> remember it. But there are cannabinoids found in other, in other plants other than just Oh gosh, congratulations. Congratulations, Crystal. That's great. Huge deal. Huge deal. And so um, the endocannabinoid system allows us to take these extocannabinoids and turn them into regulators for our CB1 and CB2 receptors. Um, and so the THC helps to open them up and then the rest of the cannabinoids can kind of go inside of there. That's why like CBD on the legal market, like nationally, isn't really as impactful because it comes from hemp based products. And uh, hemp based products are void of THC because THC is bad, you know? So you end up peeing out the CBD from hemp. So with cannabis in the legal markets, CBD or THC, whatever, THC is in everything. Literally, you can't sell anything in a dispensary, at least in the state of California, if it does not have like THC trace amounts inside of it. Um, so what that does is it opens up the CB1 and CB2 receptors, kind of like cuticles that kind of open like blinds to be able to receive all those cannabinoids and anthocyanins and terpenoids to be able to really help regulate the body. Um, I have a lot of resources that I can share with Joan so she can share with all of you guys so you can learn a little bit more about this super complex system that honestly I think is starting to get a little bit more um, buzzworthiness these days than it has in the past. And so it takes a long time for your endocannabinoid system to become regulated, partially because unfortunately at this time as Americans, there is literally no cannabinoids coming in through our diet anymore. Once prohibition happened over a hundred mm -hmm. years ago, they stopped feeding our uh, livestock hemp. And so we stopped receiving cannabinoids, extocannabinoids from the world. And that deregulated our endocannabinoid system. Okay. So that explains, so let me see if I can break down. We all have endocannabinoids. All of us, even animals do. But in the past we had hemp in everything when it was legal, right? We had hemp rope, hemp fabric, hemp pillows, hemp tinctures, sativa tinctures even. So they were balancing our body. So our bodies got used to them, yeah. used to this. And then so once prohibition happened, then the idea that people could be stressed or out of balance because they don't have a cannabinoid in their system is really revolutionary, but probably true. Right? Yeah. Definitely. And so being able to put extocannabinoids into the body um, is really important over time to regulate the system and help with uh, pain, help with autoimmune issues, help with really anything that you're imbalanced from. I don't want to make any like huge, great, insane scientific claims here, but this is just my anecdotal experience and um, what I've experienced, not just with my father, but myself and many friends um, and as well as thousands of people in the cannabis market in California over the last three years that I've been able to engage with, interact with, educate, and um, ultimately sell to. So tell us a little bit, and I have been watching Michelle, guys, <laughs> since I, I moved here in 2015. She didn't, she wasn't working full-time in the industry then, but she did have her hydroponic shop. And my radio station. And her radio station. And, and I learned about how she had gotten her dad off of uh, you know, out of the wheelchair, but I didn't hear all the details and I'm really very fascinated, but I'm also fascinated in watching how you've expanded in the, there's two issues, how you've expanded in the can cannabis business. And then how do we use this concept? You're the first person who's ever told me about terpenes. Okay. Okay. And I know that we want to, when we talk about self-care, it's like, how do I find the right product 
for me. Yeah. Like with this thing, right? This There's thing so many right products. here. It's called your nose, and it's <laughs> <laughs> and it's really great at telling your body if the cannabis that you are about to consume or purchase is good for you and good for what your body needs. How does it do that? Well, it, it does that with terpenes. So terpenes are actually uh, horticulturally meant to be a defense mechanism against like um, pests, sun, you know, wind um, for the cannabis plant. But therapeutically, each terpene can really help the body in various different ways, whereas it could be for mood or it could be for ailments or it could be for energy or it could be for you know, appetite, you know, all of these things are stimulated by the, and uh, by the terpenes. So terpenes are formed when you look at, I wish we had some weed. Do you have weed? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> so, um, I brought cans today, but, um, so when you look at like a nug of weed, it's really frosty, right? And that frost is coming from, uh, trichomes. So trichomes, like I said, are developed to be able to be a defense mechanism. And inside of those trichomes, um, when they get like a nice, pretty, like ambery color, they are well developed and they are going to have terpenes inside of them. Not just terpenes, but they also have anthocyanins in there um, and fats and lipids and all kinds of different things that add to the overall impact of cannabis on your body. So terpenes uh, encourage what is called the entourage effect. Um, and the entourage effect is what you get when you are consuming not just cannabis, but also terpenes as well. Um, and I, I guess I should go back and rephrase that. Not just THC, I suppose, would be the better way to put it. Um, you're not just consuming THC, you're also consuming based on terpenes. So right now in the cannabis market, and I think nationwide, there is like a huge rush to the top with THC percentage. It is ludicrous to me. Oh. It's ludicrous to all my colleagues. It's ludicrous to all my old school like heads that I've smoked with. It's, it's just seriously ludicrous in my opinion because THC is not the most impactful cannabinoid in cannabis. I don't care. Come for me. Come for me. Wait a it second. is not. Oh, okay, so it's not. <laughs> it's you not know, you THC. See, you see those the things. Is, it has twenty three percent. Or I or had a boyfriend. Thirty four percent. Right, and he said he'd only get the high. This thing is, I'll go in the dispensary and ask for the highest percentage THC. Give it to we me. We hear it every day, and as a saleswoman, I see it every single day. Like the twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two fly by the pounds. The eleven percent. 12%, the 13% sits forever. And I don't, I don't know. I have a lot of suspicions as to why the market is like that right now, but I digress. Either way, <laughs> you should not be shopping for cannabis for THC percentage. You are robbing yourself of experiencing the true power of cannabis by doing so. And you are saturating your brain and your endocannabinoid system with a lot of THC, which actually can make you super sick. Which actually counts for, I've heard of people getting sick yeah. from too much cannabis. Well, too much THC. I mean, it, it literally is a syndrome where THC can stimulate vomiting, you know, right. and you just, every time you, you smoke it, you will vomit, you know, even in the showers, everything t high THC will just make you do that. So I'd like to kind of backtrack a little bit. If we go back to like, you know, your days as a young lady, the smoke that you were smoking was not 30%. <laughs> No, we it was smoked. not twenty five percent. It was CBD rich. To be completely honest, are you serious? It was all CBD the, rich. I, first of all, you weren't around <laughs> when I first was introduced to cannabis, but it was a brick. It was a brick that had weeds. <laughs> it had seeds and twigs and weird things in it. Solid. Brick. I mean, Cheech and Chong were smoking fifteen percent and less, but you didn't know what was in it. I, I, you would, I didn't. You smoked whatever they brought you. Totally you did not. So when I first went into a medical marijuana clinic up north and I'm seeing these signs about sativa, indica, hybrid, I got very upset. It's like, wait, what do you mean? What do you mean? And now I have to learn something right. to smoke cannabis. Right. But then you also have you know, the older heads as yourself who come into the dispensaries and are very ornery about it. And they're like, Not back ornery. in my day, I was smoking weed that was real strong. I need the 36%. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and it's like, 
It was not 36% back then. It was CBD rich. It was CBD rich. And 15%. (laughs) And less. Okay, okay. But it was new to our system. Of course, absolutely. It was with the cannabinoids. Absolutely. And it was like, you know, it was weed. (laughs) And so it's really created this really interesting dynamic. And, you know, a a little pro tip, you know, in California, they literally test like a couple grams off a pound for THC percentage. And each nug on a harvest for the same monocrop like say you're growing blue dream the same the the nug from each plant of blue dream that you are growing they all test different so (laughs) when you open up your jar and it says 36 and you're looking at all the different nugs they all test different and they might not even from be from the batch that you that they actually took that weed and tested it from it could be from you know Wow. Yeah. I am learning a lot, a lot. Guys, do you like this? This is really so interesting to me. So let's get down to more even practical. Sure. Of course. So because so many people that I've interviewed and talked to, uh, many of them have had weird reactions with cannabis. They're, you know, they're, or they're used to using it recreational. And now we're proposing. So I want to get down to several categories. Sure. Several, say you're using cannabis for stress right. and anxiety. I know that if you're using the, the either too high in the THC, then you're going to have a breakdown and a meltdown. Like, so how does this whole, how does this relate to knowing what to take and this thing of terpenes? Right. So once again, going back to your nose. Um, so when you smell cannabis that smells like lemons or it smells like oranges, typically that's going to be an anxiety inducing strain. Oh, it'll make you anxious? It'll make you anxious. It really encourages energy. It really encourages movement. It really encourages uh, fast-pacedness when they smell like that. If it smells like gas, uh, more like, I don't want to say gas in the sense of like an earthy gas because there are two different gases you can smoke. Um, There's like the earthy earthy gas that would be like more of an indica. And then there's more of like a real diesel-y stinky gas. And that would be like more of like a sour diesel. Um, So the sour diesel is going to be super awesome rich, right? So that that like really stinky diesel nose. And what kind of effect does that have? So Osamine is immediately going to give you so much energy. Like I like to smoke Osamine rich strains, whether it's concentrate or flower before I go to the can gym. Can you spell that for us? Sure. So, we, can, so maybe Tina can put it in the comments. Yeah, totally. It's O-C-I-M-E-N-E-N-E. I'm pretty sure. Austin, spell it one more Osamine. time so she can get it. Here, let me type it. Okay. I think I got to type it before I say it. Awesome mean. Okay. And this is a terpene also, right? There you go. go. Thank you guys. This is a terpene. I think I added another N in there, but that's Use your imagination then. Awesome mean. uh, And then uh, limonene. That's the other one. Those are going to be really up right? Like really, really up, really anxiety producing. Um, You're going to want to turn to those like if you need to stay up late or you're about to do art. Like remember I used to always tell you like you really want to take the limonene strains, you know. I thought limonene was for when you go out and you're social. You could do that too. You can get social with it for sure. A night out would be great with some limonene. Um, But if you're looking for pain relief and you're looking for something that's anti-anxiety, you're going to want to go sometimes for like cannabis that smells like bread. Um, or that's going to be terpenoline, or you want to go for something that's going to be more like um, earthy and musty, which is going to be myrcene. And those are found more in like indica dominant strains. And those ones will help with pain as well as they will help with, um, you know, kind of impacting THC percentage up a little bit more. (laughs) The stuff I'm smoking now has my ass glued to the chair. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're probably smoking something with with myrcene in it. You are not going anywhere, my friend. (laughs) Except enjoying the show today. Yeah. And so terpenes, you know, there's a lot of content out there for you guys to be able to dig into beyond mm-hmm. just rewatching this. Um, I really love green flower media. Um, they have a lot of really great talks and lectures about the endocannabinoid system, about terpenes. Um, and then also, at least in the cannabis market in California, there are some brands that are starting to sell their flower based off their terpene profiles. Um, so another little pro insider is that in the state of California,
California, the Bureau of Cannabis Control requires all growers to test their flower for their terpene percentages. So every single cultivator in California knows what their terpene percentages are for their cannabis plant. Um, you just... We're just not giving them they, as consumers. Do they put it on the bottles? The Sometimes. Because I don't see it. There are some, like, uh, for instance, I, I believe Claiborne has always been one that lists the, uh, the terpenes. terpenes that are on there. Um, I think that there are some edibles that are starting to, like, infuse with terpenes, you know. Um, a lot of people in the market think, like, terpenes are going to be, like, the next big thing. And I'm really eager for that. I really want the BCC to start educating more about terpenes and less about uh, this focus on THC percentage. If they're going to mm -hmm. regulate us, if they're going to be a bureau of control, um, it would be great for them to be able to, to actually educate us, you know, with what they're charging us to do, you know? So that's um, asking a lot. Yeah, right? it is. It is. Okay, they can't even come to agreement about giving us bank, you know, giving the industry banking. Yeah, truly. truly. Okay. We have a lot of work to do. We but, still have a lot of work to do. They don't yeah, do so, all this to alcohol and totally. certainly not, to, they should be doing this to tobacco. Can you imagine if they had mm -hmm. to regulate the every, terpenes of the tobacco every plant? Every tobacco plant. Do they have Jesus. terpenes? Or, yeah, tobacco has terpenes in it. I don't know what, but uh -huh. and Every my favorite yeah, what's terpene is going to be beta carophyllene. Um, it's really great for being um, motivated and focused, but it also helps with pain. So I'm I'm a big fan of that. Uh -huh. If I could get a strain that has like myrcene, beta carophyllene, and um, and uh, osamine in it, because I do need like the little energy boost. I'm okay. Okay. So that's so that's so interesting. Like to have these three things you're looking for yeah. in a strain. So I always tell everyone, like, know what you want to do with your cannabis. So yeah, and that's important. So again, if you want to relax and you're taking that upper limonene, you're not going to get. You're not going to lay down. Confused. You're going to be watching TV like paranoid. Okay. So <laughs> what kind of strain has those three things that you like in it? Um, the osamine, the lemonine, and usually what, like cake the strains. Okay, oh, cake. cake strains like wedding cake or lemon pound cake, or like you know, I don't know. I've seen like a punch cake before, which really like hit me. Um, any cannabis that I start smelling, and I'm like, oh my god, I can smell the winter forest. Oh my god, I can smell the gas. Oh my god, I can smell the coffee and, and diesel a little bit in there. I'm like, okay, that's that's the one. So. Oh. I really follow my nose. Okay, so the case, I don't care if it's twelve percent. I'll buy it. I want her nose. Actually, guys, <laughs> uh, to me, I have a hard time differentiating in this in the in the smelling of cannabis. Although I think it's sure. nice, they want me to smell it. Sure. It's like okay, I'll, I'll smell it for you. Yeah, but I yeah. don't. COVID changed that too. Though. I, I don't know what I'm smelling so much. So so I didn't even understand this about cake. I thought cake when I see it, I, I think indica. Sometimes. In the couch. There are some that are hybrid. Got it. Yeah, and I don't need a full sativa. I just need something that has a little bit of motivating to it. So you, so if you want to be motivated and up and work, say, and this is, I always thought that you would stay away from anything like indica or slowing down because, right. but then again, you're saying if you're terpene-based, you don't have to worry about if it's indica sativa or hybrid. The genotypes don't really matter at that point because terpenes exist across the spectrum of the of the type of plant it is. If it's indica sativa or hybrid, like you can have an osamine rich indica, you know, mm -hmm. you can have a limonene rich uh, indica as well, you know. So I mean, they are out there. Interesting. Interesting. Well. I, I like, I actually, I'm blown away. The more I learn about cannabis, the less I know. And there's like a company called True Terpenes that actually sells terpenes that are just in the liquid form. So you can actually like smell it and, and like familiarize yourself with these different terpenes and what they smell like without the flower attached to it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I really became very clear on what I was smelling was because I, I, I was at like a conference and they had, those true terpenes there. So if I wanted something again, creative, uplifting, awesome, 
Osamine and limonene. If you're trying to relax, linalool, myrcene, beta carophyllene. What about if you want, okay, let's get into, so. Oh, I like pinene too. Pinene is super creative also. Oh, <laughs> I can you see one that has them all? So you can, the bottom line is you can actually smoke something that has less THC and still get amazing benefits yep. from it. And then also, I, I think it's important to note for the folks out there that like, use concentrated vape pens um you know if you're getting something right. that's distillate well i mean i sell it and i love it you know i have no problem with all the various methods but if you're buying something that says distillate on it it's something that is more focused on the thc percentage and not so much the terpenes whereas if you're buying like a live resin cartridge or a live rosin cartridge or a sauce cartridge those actually are not distillate so it's not just focused on the thc they have the terpenes in there okay so that's what we're looking for is the resin yeah. the rosin the resin the sauce live always you want to do live i'm not really that big of a fan of the cured the cured resin cartridges i don't think i don't think they have the same effect but I don't know because every whenever I go into cartridges, I end up losing them all. Yeah, that's a thing. But and some people need some people aren't that way, you know. And I end up losing them all, and mm -hmm. then I think, well, maybe I'm not supposed to have them. <laughs> okay. All right. Smell, taste, and THC level, and that's getting right. that the THC level isn't is should be at the the it's the least important. Yeah, the okay. smell is going to be the highest of importance, and and how it how it hits your body when you smell it. I think you should be teaching classes in the smell, hun. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, so. So now just tell us about how your brand, the company that you work for now and all the different kinds of things you're seeing in cannabis. Sure, so um, as you said in my intro, I came into the Coachella Valley's uh, Prop 215 market, or I'm sorry, uh, Prop 64 market in 2018, right as it came on. Which is recreational. Which is recreational. Um, I started in June. It was regulated and enforced July 1st. So, wow. Was That's like when you right started, there. Henry's. Yeah. And so I came in with an organic flower company that was one brand, had like maybe 12 items on their menu at any time. And now, um, here we are like three years later, and I work for the largest distribution company in California and worldwide, because California, I just learned, has the largest cannabis industry in the world. And I didn't know that. I wasn't aware either, but I guess 800 shops in California. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. And so dispensaries. It's a lot. And so... Um, now I am an account manager for a distribution company. My focus is on sales, driving sales, uh, sell through and uh, communication between the retailer and my brands that I carry. Um, I carry multiple brands uh, across the top five SKUs of all categories of, um, of cannabis in, in the marketplace from edibles to cartridges to concentrates, um, flower, uh, indoor, outdoor. I carry all of them. Um, my top brands that I carry are going to be Raw Garden, uh, Pacific Stone, Select, Seven Leaves, Glasshouse Farms, um, Emerald Sky, Big Pete's Treats. Um, gosh, I, I feel bad if I'm missing anyone. Henry's, <laughs> Henry's Original just came on the platform. And then also like 20 others. It's a, it's a lot of brands that I carry. Um, we're huge. We scale immense. We've scaled immensely. The company has scaled immensely since it started in 2018, um, and we are beginning to branch out to be multi-state operators. Um, and we are gearing up for whenever national happens to be the national distributor. Um, That's big. It's huge. That's and big. It's huge. And so I, when I started with the company, I was managing 97 accounts and then now my territory has been trimmed down and um, I now just manage the Coachella Valley area and I manage about 57 accounts now. Um, still a huge number. All here in um, all here in the Coachella Valley. That's 57 dispensaries. Yep. In uh, Coachella Valley, Needles and Blythe is where my, where I serve my territory. Um, the company's huge. 
Um, I love it. I love the fast pacedness of it as well as I love being able to have my ear into the mouths, I guess, of my brands um, because I get to hear what all of their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what they are looking to do, what they're looking to create. Um, and really from what I've gathered from this experience of being in the above ground market over the last three years is that um, it's extremely volatile. It's extremely taxed. It's, it's extremely uneducated um, as to what the plant actually is. We're getting there, though. I'm really proud of the work we've done in three years. Um, and there's a lot of room to grow. Um, and I also think that, like, we're all just going to wake up one day in the near future and, like, national legalization is going to just happen because... Or we're all going to jail, you know, like one way or the other. Well, it is kind of interesting, you know, Biden took office and then he fired all of his staff members who had been using marijuana. Yeah. So, and, um, I mean, we'll see, you know, the banks are still very difficult to deal with. You know, I've had paychecks uh, bounce before, you know, and um, it's hard to find people who want to give you a loan for a house, you know, but I really believe in cannabis. And that's why I sit here because of the background that I have, because of the changes I've seen. Um, I don't think this is a commodity. I think this really is a consciousness shift that we're going through on the planet. Um, and cannabis is really helping to open a lot of people's minds to other ways of healing. It's really paving the way for other plant medicines to come onto the forefront. Um, you know, combo medicine and psilocybin medicine and other plant journeys like Aya have gotten very, very mainstream and popular since cannabis has kind of popped off as well. Um, and I really think that all these things work together mm -hmm. um, to shift consciousness. I mean, like I was right. on, I was like clicking through Gaia the other day and they had like this five minute news report about like, why is Tara like taking off these days, you know? And it's the same thing with cannabis, in my opinion, right. like consciousness, everyone, like the consciousness is shifting. So I'm in it for the long play. Um, I'm in it because I love talking about cannabis. I love educating about cannabis and I love being a part of this. Um, and ultimately I would love to be a policymaker and a change maker in this game. Um, and I think that the only way to do that is by having, having experience. So um, by the time I decide to make a political move and a, and a actual move into the bureaucratic world of, of policy and legislation, mm -hmm. um, I will have had uh, eight years of above ground cannabis experience. So I, I have a, a long term plan here. <laughs> I love this. I was yeah. going to ask you your long term plan. I noticed we had a question. Someone wants to know if you're hiring in your company, if they are hiring. Um, you can always look at herbalsolutions.com slash careers. There you have it, herbalsolutions.com and a career. And cannabis, by the way, is a growing industry. Yeah, I mean, you we don't, don't have just to worry about losing your job. Totally. The industry's over. And on top right? of it, like, there's. Uh, so many positions. There's warehouse positions, there's drivers, there's uh, retail, there's sales, there's. IT, there's. There's literally there is room of every for everyone of every skill set in the cannabis field. Uh, so, you know, we're talking about legalization here. I'm in New York and they just legalized it. And I heard you can smoke in the streets of New York City. Congratulations. Okay. Which Can't I think wait is to do it. <laughs> well, I'm from New York and you would never have smoked on the streets of Manhattan. Nor would you smoke in this. Well, people smoke everywhere nowadays. But Oh, before we go on, though, Tina, it's actually herbal without the A. It's H-E-R-B-L solutions. Got it. She'll fix it. I'm pretty sure that's the website. Or just H-E-R-B-L solutions dot com slash careers. Wonderful. Um, okay, anyway, what are you about to say? Oh, well, I mean, for New York, she said, how long do you think it will take to get recreationally from a dispensary physically or through mail? I really don't know. Oh, my God. How long you think it'll take till you get the weed? We just don't know. Listen, um, California has been ahead of the game here and really ahead of the curve. Yeah. Let, let me ask you a question. How do you see cannabis unfolding now in our great state here of California? Well, it's not going to slow down. That's no, for it's sure. Not. It's not slowing down. Um, I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of California companies that are now starting to do direct to consumer. So mm -hmm. that's going to, that's interesting. Are you allowed as a well, brand? Keep like, us doing it. Can you mail it? And keep like, us doing it. So I don't, I don't know if they have their own delivery drivers or if they, I'm really not sure the legalities behind it because I'm not a pioneer of that world. But um, yeah, it's, it, that's a, that's something that's happening Okay. Right now. Okay. So, I mean, if that happens, 
That way, if that uh, happens, <laughs> that they can send it around the country wherever. Well, no, to California. Okay. Yeah, California. to just so the markets they're... that they're in right now, for sure. So that's what Kiva's is doing right now. They sell like the espresso beans and the blueberries and mm-hmm. the gummies and stuff. And so they are selling direct to consumer, which to me, I'm like, whoa, what happens to the dispensaries then if you're sending direct to consumer, you know, but I mean, I don't know. We're just, we just hit three or we're just about to that's hit three years on July 1st. So I really don't know what the, what the future looks like for us, but yeah. Um, I'm in it for national distribution and I'm in it for international distribution. I want to sell to London. Oh, I'm going to go sell, with you to London. I want to sell I... Cali weed to London. That's what I want to do. <laughs> so you would, you would want to represent your brands and be the rep over an yeah. international yeah. distributor. This That'd is, be so fun. So guys, this is huge. Like what she's projecting as to her career goals would mean, you know, international distribution of cannabis. Uh, and it's already which, happening in Israel and Spain. Mexico just came online as well. Uruguay came online. There are international players. They just, they don't got that Cali flower. They don't know. <laughs> now, when I was younger growing up, we wanted Mexican weed, but it's not like, it's not like California weed. California marijuana is some of the best. Hey, Kelly. Right? They all, everyone is really loving. Guys, do you like Michelle? Are you loving? <laughs> do you have any questions for her? Any last minute questions for her? We want to answer them. Um, So I want to mention this, the thing about Mexico legalizing cannabis, okay? Because Mexico had illegal cannabis all these years, the drug cartels have been able to literally run Mexico. And I know years ago, 10 years ago, Mexico was talking about decriminalizing marijuana and the United States kind of freaked out about it because of our fake drug war, which has been going on for centuries. I, I mean, I think, but the fact is, is that cannabis came to Mexico in the 1400s. I mean, it was in every part of their culture. And I, I was looking this up that. today, you know, the, the Mexican revolution, the revolutionary song, La Cucaracha, was all about their soldiers smoking cannabis as they went to war. The roaches. The roaches. Cucarachas. Oh, cucaracha. <laughs> yeah, but okay. They, but they Did were it? talking about la. No. Oh. Roaches. <laughs> la cucaracha. <laughs> oh. Okay. So now I really embarrassed myself and learned a lot. But here's what <laughs> it says it caught on with both peasants and the higher classes in Mexico. And the iconic anthem of the Mexican Revolution is La Cucaracha. La Cucaracha. And I didn't think about it <laughs> as being a roach. I thought it was a cockroach. Yeah. But they were still talking about roaches yeah. because the whole song apparently is about the peasant army getting high as they went through the desert. So funny. But, but the whole point of that is that cannabis was very much a part of their culture. And the culture worldwide, even part of our culture, you're looking at me like our body, mind, and soul was infused with using this consciousness health enhancing plant. Yeah, truly. But it's, but, it's been here alongside our evolution. It has, but you know, it seems to me like for a long time, you know, you mentioned that more people are into tarot and Oracle cards. In fact, I think they're growing as you can make money on tarot cards too. Like you can on cannabis. I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess I do too, but, but, but the truth is, is that it's indicative yeah. of people wanting to know more. So the, you know, what I love about cannabis and the reason I have started this show is that I feel that when you take the time, you can use it for advanced meditation. You can use it for advanced consciousness enhancing. Yeah. You can use it uh, to. That's go what ahead. I did in San Francisco. Uh, <laughs> that macro dose. That macro dose, yeah. so you're not going to get the enhanced consciousness on the micro dose. Are you? Or it might take you many years of micro dosing to, I don't know though, maybe you could sit down and meditate as someone new to cannabis with micro doses and feel the expansion and the openness, but I just had a different experience. Well, it, I find it really fascinating because you would come over and sometimes say, well, Joan, you like this, this is a mercy, you like right. the mercy, you know? right. I, I still had no idea what she was really talking about. And it wasn't until you did your presentation online at the online cannabis event 
You remember that? Yes. Yeah. And you did a fantastic Thank job. You. But, and I'm going to put the post the link on this so you could see Michelle's amazing presentation <laughs> on how to use terpenes and how, and, and how to self care, because this is the difference between a pharmaceutical prescription where your doctor says two a day for the rest of your life with all those side and effects. Healing. Yeah. When you can take this, but you have to learn what your body, I think that's the whole point of self care. You actually have to, talk to your body. Oh, my favorite tool is the relief app. So it's R E L E A F. And it is in the app store and you can actually track your cannabis usage, whether you smoke from a bong, a pipe, a, a, a joint, you know, you can track your puffs and um, by doing so you can understand like what, it, how it affects you. Because honestly, that app, you log in who you bought it from, where you bought it from, what it was, like what grower it was, what brand, and you can get to know yourself and your smoking habits a little bit better. So that's kind of like how, so my sister used to tell me to get a journal. Yeah. The gold leaf journals too. So having a, so in other words, the way to self care is to record. Yep. Record and reflect, take baths with cannabis bath bombs and a joint and cannabis drinks at the same time. You heard it from myself. <laughs> I'm a luxurious Taurus. I can't help it. Um, and then also like ask questions. And if you can't find the answers, you know, Google it. Like figure it out, go to green leaf or green flower media, listen, like immerse yourself because like, it's not like I just smoked a joint and suddenly all this knowledge just like infused into my body. Like it's, it's been a lot of reading and a lot of absorbing and a lot of education um, to get me to the space where I can even touch upon the small surface of the iceberg. You know, there's a lot more to this. Every time I think I learn something, I realize I know almost nothing. And you you had so many truths in this that I'm going to go back and listen to it. Oh, thank you. I love no, you. you didn't. I think, I think people really learned a lot from you. And I'm so appreciative that you dropped in. And, you know, here's another way to take cannabis, okay? 30 Blood, calories. orange, right? Yes, and it's only 30 calories, but it has 2 milligrams of THC and 4 milligrams of cannabis, of CBD, rather. And uh, most likely to confuse. That's what it says here. Least likely to forget. Least likely <laughs> to forget. I'm not even sure. I find that confusing. I'm a big fan of these. All right. So so there's many ways you can take cannabis. Um, here's our dear friend Samuel. Good information. And Samuel's also, you know, kind of asking what the cannabis industry. But we can discuss that next time. Is there awesome. anything else you want everyone to know about you? Um, the industry. Gosh, I don't know. I'll be smoking weed until the day I'm died. Okay, guys, this <laughs> is my dear friend, Michelle Rizzio. Okay. She is a child of the cannabis plant. <laughs> she learned how, I mean, I think you started, if you used it first medically and discovered that it helped your pain and that you were able to get through college and actually graduate. So you figured out how to use this and, and, and then I love, I love your family. Yeah. Thank you. And just to know that your dad has never had to go back to that morphine. It's trip. exciting. So guys, you probably, if you think about it between your parents, between other people, you know, in the community, I see Michelle rocks. I want you to actually start to think about family members that could, especially your seniors that could use cannabis um, because it's a, it's criminal for them to be taking over the counter drugs. Okay. It's yeah. those, those Shorten hurt lifespan. your system. They, they shorten your lifespan. If, if her father was addicted on to opiates, yeah. she didn't have a father a full fledged father growing up, he was in a wheelchair. If cannabis had been available 20 years before, you and would have had your dad. Absolutely, absolutely. You would have had your dad your whole life. So there's a new trend coming and an awareness that, heck, we can be in charge of our own consciousness, our own health. And if right? your doctor says otherwise, fire him and hire another one. You heard that from Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you guys so much. All right, sweetheart. I'm going to close out the show, mm -hmm. but I'm.
just so happy that she was here. She's going to go the other corner. I'm going to drink her drink for her. No, <laughs> it's gone. Guys, I love doing this show and your feedback really helps. Your support really, really does help in knowing what you're interested in and what you're looking for. Next week's show is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be Joan interviewing Joan. Okay, you can ask me all the questions you want. We're going to be talking about the spirituality of cannabis. I'm going to be doing readings for some of you online. I'm going to show you how you can step into expanding your awareness with using cannabis, how you can use this opening of consciousness to understand more of who you are, why you're here, your purpose and your mission, which is what I do this lifetime. My work is all about teaching people how to step into the miraculous and how to expand your own personal gifts, step into your mastery and know who you are. And that is very, very beautiful. We did not talk today about cannabis and cancer treatment, but certainly appreciate your feedback, Kelly. And we will be talking about that over the next few months too. So guys, you can find me at joanofangels.com. You can find me on our YouTube channel. And again, I'm growing the YouTube channel. In the last month, I've gone, I've increased by over 100 subscribers, thanks to all of you and your love. And they say the first thousand is a forever process. I would like to have it happen overnight. Thank you very much. We want to reach more people with our message of raising your consciousness, which is what plant medicine of all kinds is geared to heal your body and heal your soul. So I've really loved having my friends on the show the last few weeks. I can't wait to hear some of your feedback. Feel free to write to me or comment. And I adore all of you. All right. I'm going to take a deep breath in for myself. Ask Spirit if there's anything else I want to tell you. You rock all of you that you're joining me on this dive into spiritual living. I'm filled with gratitude. And that you're all becoming friends now. And up oh, here's a dear friend of mine. I haven't seen her in a long time. <laughs> and just good to see you all. So have a blessed and beautiful week. We will see you all next week. Thank you so much. Don't forget to share it out. Like and subscribe. And have the most blessed week ever. That's it for this week, guys. Have an amazing July 4th and an amazing independence of your body, mind, and spirit as you step out. Love you all.